Good afternoon, distinguished representatives, friends and colleagues. It is a pleasure to welcome you this afternoon, now not muted, to the 12th International Forum of NGOs in official partnership with UNESCO. We are pleased that this forum is being conducted with simultaneous interpretation in French, English and Spanish, and I hope that you have been able to use the correct language channel on the platform. I'm very pleased to be here at UNESCO headquarters in Paris with Sabina Colombo, the Chief of the Unit for Civil Society Partnerships, and I will now hand over to her. Merci Nick. Bonjour à tous et à toutes, participants et participantes, et bienvenue au nom de l'UNESCO. Hello everybody and welcome on behalf of UNESCO. We are going to start this forum with the uh, introduction session. I'm delighted to announce the three speakers that will speak in turn. Each of them have recorded their speech on this occasion. To begin with, Mr. Chin Shu, the uh, Deputy Director General, will be speaking, followed by Mr. David de Grosso, the chairperson of the International Conference of NGOs. And then there will be a message by Mr. Ban Ki-moon, former UN Secretary General, co-chair of the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens. Now, without further ado, I'm going to give the floor and um, hand it over to Mr. Chin Shu. Thank you. Mr. Chairperson of the International Conference of NGOs, dear NGO partners, dear friends, I am very happy to join you on behalf of the Director General for the opening of this important meeting, the International Forum of NGOs in official partnership with UNESCO. Coming two years late after the previous forum, this event is an opportunity to bring the extended family of UNESCO together again after disruptions caused by the pandemic. Our organization takes great joy in the fact that so many of you are here today to review our shared commitments and common ambitions. In all the areas of our mandate, UNESCO is fortunate to be able to count on your determination to work side by side with us. Because you are the hands that can transform so many things in our societies, to use the wonderful phrase coined by Ali Mahdi Nouri, UNESCO Artist for Peace. This forum is an opportunity to underline the great importance of your commitment to building global citizenship. This objective lies at the heart of our organization's mission and your device, actions, contributions, and perspectives are crucial to achieving it. Because to forge mutual understanding, to build the conditions to open discussion and to fight hatred, all of us need to take action. By finding shared solutions based on respect by and for all people, NGOs actively create inspiration, initiatives, and projects to develop this global citizenship. Mesdames et Messieurs, Ladies and gentlemen, deep partners, Dear friends, on this subject, as on so many others, this forum provides an opportunity to recall the wide variety of forms taken by your commitments. It also bears witness to the importance that UNESCO attaches to the work and voices of NGOs. In this respect, I would like to pay tribute to the role of the NGO UNESCO Liaison Committee, and in particular to its president, Davide Grosso, who on a daily basis, bear witness to our conviction that NGOs are major partners of our organization. UNESCO is delighted to be able to count on your expertise, your vision, and your experience 
which you share with us on a daily basis, but also at major moments in the life of our organization. Many of you took the floor a few weeks ago at our general conference, as well at other meetings that have punctuated this year, which again bears witness to your involvement in our programs and conventions. And you never fail to respond with us to the challenges and crises facing the world. In the face of school closing, many NGOs have joined our global coalition for education to work with us to ensure educational continuity. Faced with the closure of cultural venues, many NGOs have also joined our resilient initiatives to bring the voice of all cultural professionals to the table in order to find answers to this new crisis. For all these mobilizations, for this rich and lively cooperation, I would like to express our gratitude on my own behalf and on that of UNESCO as well. Ladies and gentlemen, dear partners, dear friends, with this forum, we're helping to bring to life a multilateralism that is open to the world, open to society, open to all the diversity of commitments. Here at UNESCO, we're convinced of this and our new medium-term strategy has confirmed it. We want to strengthen our partnership because it is essential to the success of our mission. Obviously, working together makes a real difference. And now, I hope, together with you, to see UNESCO's family of NGO partners continue to grow, to expand, and to strengthen our ties. I therefore look forward to the conclusions of the forum, and I wish you fruitful discussions. I thank you all. Distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends, welcome. Bienvenue. Bienvenidos. I feel privileged to address you for the opening of this 12th Forum of NGOs in official partnership with UNESCO on achieving global citizenship. How not to feel privileged to be surrounded by such eminent and diverse speakers? And how not to feel honored to be supported in such strong way by UNESCO on the one end and by NGOs on the other? Although we are only at the beginning, let me say how grateful I am to UNESCO for the continuous support and to NGOs for their restless engagement. Achieving global citizenship. As we all know, global citizenship is a continuously evolving concept, a mindset that is actively supported by civil society organizations all over the globe a process that is continuously nurtured by NGOs. I consider the global NGO community as a community of global citizens, agents of change. The 406 NGOs in official partnership with UNESCO, with their mindset and their diversity, are agents of change for global citizenship. They are a unifying force rather than a dividing one. Members of the human race who are looking beyond the limited scope of, of geographical or personal interest and work ends in ends to develop concrete solution to today's global challenges. Humans who would like to stay human. We, NGOs, 
experiment every day new strategies to achieve global citizenship. Strategies that are more inclusive, more fair, and again, more human-centered. The Sustainable Development Goals and their 169 targets are one of the world's most meaningful and measurable expressions of global citizenship. However, without our commitment as a community, the SDGs remain only a set of national commitments. This is why we are restless in advocating for a more efficient and concrete cooperation. <clears throat> in fact, although the COVID outbreak has highlighted once again how deeply interconnected we are, the Global North is going through the third dose of vaccine, while the Global South is still waiting for the first. National and economic interests still prevail when discussing about the future of our planet. And walls are being built all over instead of being knocked down. We must strengthen our commitment to the global community and care more about it, understand more our role as part of the wall. And finally, we must take care of the next generation of global citizens which must be given the opportunity to learn and therefore elaborate solutions to global challenges. These are the responsibility of each of us as global citizens. The reality is that if we do not start to think and work differently, global citizenship will remain just a wonderful dream. The program of the two days ahead of us is the fruit of a collective reflection, which I'm sure will contribute to the global debate and show why the global NGO community is and will be key in achieving global citizenship, in making that dream come true. I wish all of us two days of exciting exchanges and I'm looking forward for more in-depth discussions. Thank you. Honorable participants, dear global citizens, it is my great pleasure to welcome you today for the 12th International Forum of NGOs in Official Partnership with UNESCO. Today, I join you both in my capacity as the former UN Secretary General and also as the co-chair of the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens, BKMC, a quasi-international organization based in Vienna, Austria. This year, the Ban Ki-moon Center was grateful to be granted official partnership status with UNESCO. It is an honor for us to join this distinguished group of over 400 NGOs. Thank you for the warm welcome. The BKMC, which I co-chair with the former president of Austria, Dr. Heinz Fischer, focuses on fostering leadership for the sustainable development goals, as well as the Paris Climate Change Agreement with a global citizen mindset. Thus, today's theme, achieving global citizenship, is a subject dear and dear to me and to the BKM Center. The Center has various programs to empower youth and women as global citizen leaders, including fellowships, scholarships, mentorships, and executive trainings. Further, we advocate for governments and decision makers to increase their commitments to sustainable development. Since the beginning, the Center has also worked closely with UNESCO and looked to its leadership, particularly on the implementation of SDG goal number four quality education. When the SDGs were established in September 2015, 
it was clear that to achieve this ambitious agenda, ensuring access to quality education would be essential. On the SDG goal number four, target 4.7 calls for the implementation of education that is inclusive and that promotes sustainable development. It underlines the need to foster global citizenship and empower all learners to be active in our efforts to achieve the SDGs. Last year, on December 16th, the PKM Center launched Mission 4.7 together with UNESCO, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, SDSN, and Columbia University's Center for Sustainable Development with the support of the Holy See and the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. Mission 4.7 seeks to advocate for transformative education, including education for sustainable development and global citizenship education. We are pleased to work together with the UNESCO for this initiative and look forward to continuing our joint efforts moving forward. Excellencies, distinguished participants, looking at the world today, the challenges we face collectively as a humanity are greater than ever before. And thus, to meet these challenges, we must equip learners of all ages with not only the knowledge but also the competencies, values, and skills necessary to navigate the future. We must instill global citizenship. With the UNESCO's recent launch of the Futures of Education report, a new energy has been infused into our efforts to implement SDG goal number four and transformative education. I commend Director General Audrey Ajulay and UNESCO on this landmark publication, which represents a new social contract for education. The role of NGOs like ours cannot be underestimated. Informal and informal education, much work still lies ahead. But together, hand in hand, we can achieve an inclusive and sustainable world. I wish you the best for the forum and your discussions. Okay, sir. Thank you for your commitment for a better future for all, leaving no one behind. Thank you. I would like to thank our esteemed guest, Mr. Xing Shu and Mr. Ban Ki-moon for this kind and powerful words. And I officially declare the 12th International Forum of NGOs in official partnership with UNESCO as open. À ce point, je voudrais passer la parole à Monsieur. At that stage, I would like to give the floor to Nick Newland, sitting to my left. He is a member of the uh, steering committee. He was also chair of the steering committee for the forum. You have the floor. Good afternoon, distinguished representatives, friends and colleagues. It is a pleasure to finally be welcoming you to this, the 12th International Forum of NGOs in official partnership with UNESCO. As you are probably aware, this forum has had a long gestation period. It was originally intended to take place during the mandate of the previously elected liaison committee, but unfortunately had to be delayed twice, and then changed to taking place in this virtual forum, and indeed then delayed once again. I had the pleasure of joining the organizing steering committee for this forum in the previous mandate, and was honored to be asked to act as the chair of the steering committee when elected to the NGO liaison committee for the new 2020 to 2022 mandate. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of my colleagues on the Liaison Committee and of course the Steering Committee 
who have worked for several years to make this event a reality. They are, in no particular order, Martin Levy, uh, Marie-Christine Grier, Chantal Grava, uh, Philippe Bosson, Olga Legatska, Melissa Mejia Flores, Thais Queros, and our chair, co-chair, Vicky Lovelock. I am also grateful for the significant contribution and the leadership of Fatima Lane during the previous mandate. Each of these people represents an NGO, and we, of course, have had huge support from so many of the NGOs in official partnership. And I would like to take this opportunity to express my very sincere thanks for all of your contributions. Joining the NGO representatives have been Cecilia Barbieri, Chief of the Section for Global Citizenship and Peace Education, <laughs> and our esteemed colleagues in the Unit for Civil Society Partnerships, led by its chief, Sabina Colombo. Without the efforts of each of these people, we would not be here today. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our technical team at OES and remind all attendees that the portal you are using includes a tech support link if you need any assistance. Our sincerest thanks must also go to Ms. Cecile Hirsch and her team of interpreters who are working with us over the next two days and ensuring we have as broad access to this forum as possible. The forum sets as its goal, achieving global citizenship. And this is an ambitious challenge to be sure, but one we must undertake. We are all familiar with global citizenship as identified in target 4.7 of Agenda 2030 and its central importance in Sustainable Development Goal 4. There, however, remain many obstacles to achieving global citizenship. And this forum seeks to address the two priority issues highlighted by NGOs in official partnership with UNESCO when they adopted the topic of this forum. One, to find through common values, the vital link that exists between humans and the nature of which they are part. And two, to elevate the importance of living together in a harmonious and interdependent manner. To this end, we have brought together a diverse and expert range of speakers from around the world to share their thoughts and experiences. We are honored to have heard already supportive and productive messages from the Deputy Director of UNESCO and Mr. Ban Ki-moon, a leading proponent of the idea and ideal of global citizenship. Alongside our guest speakers, we want to hear from NGO representatives who are attending. The NGO UNESCO Liaison Committee has already conducted two significant surveys of NGOs in partnership about their priorities and work around global citizenship. In addition, we have invited five NGOs to present their specific experience in this afternoon's session titled uh, Sharing Good Practice from Civil Society. After this session, there is an open opportunity for NGO representatives to give their input and we offered, have offered as many written Q&A sessions as possible throughout the program. As the timings of events such as these digital ones are, and always are likely to fluctuate somewhat, if we have the opportunity to offer the floor to NGO representatives and other attendees further, we certainly will. On this note, I thank you all for joining us today, and we have the great pleasure of introducing a video presentation by Ms. Stefania Giannini, the UNESCO Assistant Director General for Education and opening our first session, Global Citizenship, A Pathway to a Better World. Thank you. Thank you.